Hi everyone, welcome to a recipe blog. On today's menu, we've got gnocchi. I'm gonna show you how to make gnocchi from scratch. Gnocchi is a classic Italian staple made from potato, flour, eggs, a little bit of salt and pepper to flavor, and that's all it is. So a really simple recipe that comes together really, really easily. What you need to start with is the potatoes. You've got to peel them and then we're gonna dice them up and just boil them. Um, so I'm gonna get on with that bit and then I'm gonna come back and show you what the next steps are from there. Salt's gone in, top it up with water and then bring it up to the boil, turn it down to simmer and let the potatoes cook. The easiest way to check if your potatoes are done is simply by piercing one with a fork. If it falls off like that, they're definitely cooked. Potatoes are cooked, they're steaming, piping hot. I like to do this straight away. You can let the potatoes cool a little bit if you'd like. So I'm going to start with just grabbing some of the potatoes and popping them on top. This is called a muli. If you haven't used one of these or you don't have one of these, um, you know, you can use a regular um, ricer or um you know old-fashioned fork but i do find that this is just yeah really gets a super super fine mash which is ideal for this recipe so yeah you can see it coming up the bottom it is just absolutely smooth um and there's no wastage if you have a look at the top of the mooli you just need to push it in and as the potato starts getting mashed but I'll show you if you have a look at this you'll just see how smooth it is it is just no lumps so so silky and it doesn't overwork the potato either with potatoes um, and gnocchi you don't want the more sort of mashing like if you went to put this into a blender it's just going to become a thick glug which isn't ideal so you don't want to overwork your potatoes so I really think if you can invest in a muli you can buy one online for not too expensive these days I think this one was around fifty dollars um, they are a great great investment um, it's something that in professional kitchens that's used day to day um, for potato mash um, which obviously can be used in a myriad of recipes. But I'll crack on with this and I'll show you once it's all mashed. The potato has been mashed. I'm going to generously scrunch up some sea salt flakes to go in here. Some black pepper. And then I'm just going to grab a wooden spoon and give this a mix. So it's been seasoned with salt and pepper and I've worked it quite vigorously with the wooden spoon. And what that does is just cools down the potato mash as well, especially if you've mashed it from um, really hot like I did. Next thing in is a whole egg. So I'm just cracking that and popping that in. And then again with the wooden spoon, I'm just going to combine. So the egg has been incorporated into the potato mixture and now it's time for the flour. So I've got 300 grams which is just over a cup. I'm going to start with half the flour and depending on the potatoes because I didn't really touch on that you want really waxy dry potatoes for this recipe but depending on the moisture content on the potatoes, you might need to add a little bit of flour. So you're going to have to feel the texture as you're rolling it. And at that stage, if you need, you have to add more flour. So This is the point where you want to make sure your bench is nice and clean. I've given this a wipe down before I've sprinkled it quite generously with some plain flour and you are going to be getting your hands dirty. So also a good time if you've got rings to take them off because the dough will get quite sticky. But without further ado, you wanna grab the potato dough and just pop that on the bench like so. 
and then what you're doing is pretty much working it turning it over into the flour like so and just gently incorporating it and this is what we're going to keep working the dough once you've got enough flour in it where it's holding together like that and you can just take off a little piece and see that that is going to hold together like a little dumpling grab a cutter and just divide so i've got that into half and i'm going to divide that further again into quarters so that i'll cut later again make sure this is really nice and floured and we're going to roll this out into a log and at this stage we'll cut that again you really want it to be manageable you really want the pieces that you're working with to be manageable because ultimately the size of each piece of gnocchi is going to be about the size of your thumb so we're going to make this into a big log and then from the big log we're going to cut those into little pieces and then we're going to shape them either on the back of a fork which you can use which everyone has at home or you may have seen in the opening shot I had a little wooden I've already board. gone ahead and done one of the logs I've shaped them and I'm going to show you how you can do them so I just cut them so you can cut these into sizes that you need don't be too pedantic if it's a little bit thicker on some bits it'll all even out so you just roll it on the back like so and then I'm popping it on the tray. I haven't really worried about flouring this because these, I'm not worried about them sticking. They are really good consistency. But that's basically it. You're just shaping them. And if you wanted, you could absolutely just cook them as is, as a pillow like that. Um, I just like the grooves because I think it really catches the sauce beautifully. But that's basically gnocchi, guys. Voila, gnocchi prepared. So this is gnocchi for, from half of the recipe. I've got the other half here. Because it's just Dan and me, this is a perfect serving for two adults. If you need to do the rest, if you've got four adults or you've got kids, great, go ahead and make it all. But that will last in the fridge for a couple of days. No worries, just put it in an airtight container. Um, with this one, into salted boiling water, really generously salted. Once it pops up and floats on the top, take it off with a slotted spoon and it's going to be ready to have. You can then choose to pan fry it in a little bit of butter so it's golden brown and quite crunchy on the outside and then into a sauce. Um, sage burnt butter is one of my favorites. I don't have any sage today. I'm using a really simple cream sauce with some peas and asparagus through it and a little bit of salami. Um, but you can use Napoli or whatever you like. Let's go ahead and cook these. So I've got the gnocchi ready here. I've got a big pot of salted water and I've also got butter with a little bit of olive oil because this is going to cook really quick and I want to be able to scoop it out from there and put it straight in here. So starting with the gnocchi, we're going to get those in. And you want to work fairly quickly so that they cook at the same time, but you're going to have to do this in batches. So now, since they've floated up to the top, these babies are ready. And I've got my butter and olive oil. The olive oil is just to stop the butter from burning. You don't have to do this, so you can go straight into your sauce if you'd like. I really like pan-fried gnocchi, especially if it's um, sort of a lighter sauce. If it's a Napoli sauce, I'd probably just go straight in with the soft gnocchi. Look at those golden beauties. Hey guys, the gnocchi is ready. I've got the Jaluca Chardonnay in my glass. It's a 2014 vintage from Seppels. It's a beautiful aged Chardonnay, so it's had a little bit of time in the bottle. Gorgeous color, beautiful aroma. You get a little bit of sweetness coming through, even though it's actually not on the palate. On the nose, you get beautiful sort of honeysuckle, vanilla, butterscotch. On the palate, it's really crisp and clean, nice backbone of acidity. 
a little bit of sort of again melon and peach characteristics in the plate look at the gnocchi it looks gorgeous i love these beautiful brown bits that i've pan fried it's really optional whether you want to pan fry or serve it as is as are the sauces you've got a multitude of choices gnocchi is a labor of love it isn't something that's easy to make but it is really worth the time and effort stay safe during this lockdown i really hope you churn out some beautiful meals for yourselves go on to my blog recipeblog.com www.recipeblog.com check out the recipe for full measurements and try this one at home ciao